Right, hi you're 11, this is Mr. Lim here again, and this is our first video on energy changes, about energy changes in reaction. So let's get started. Right, we're going to be looking at uh, just introducing the idea, and there's a whole bunch of definitions, and just a bit of description about what's going on. Cool. Right, so what is energy changes in reactions? So chemical reactions uh, involve the rearrangement of atoms, you and you bat, from one form to another. Okay, so during this process, energy can be released from the chemicals, or energy can be taken in by the chemicals, right? As they change from reactants to products. So either energy goes in or energy goes out. We've done this before in year eight when we talk about energy conversions or transformations, all right? Not transfer, but transformation, okay? And so in chemistry, we deal with chemical potential energy, um, but then there are other forms of energy like heat, electrical, or light energy. So effectively, like if you have a chemical reaction that gives off a glow, then it would be turning chemical potential energy into light energy, right? If you have a chemical reaction that produces electricity, say in a battery, you're turning chemical potential energy into electrical energy. So there is just the energy change in um, chemical reactions, but also uh, certain chemical reactions produce a lot of heat, and that is the most common thing that it's going to produce. Okay, so that is um, an energy change there as well. All right. So um, let's go through some uh, definitions. So the energy the chemicals have, okay, so which is chemical potential energy, and is known as enthalpy. So this is a new word that we have to remember. Enthalpy is effectively chemical potential energy. All right. It's common to refer to the transfer of energy in and out of chemicals in terms of the system and surroundings. So two new words. System is where the, are the chemicals involved. So that can be reactants or products. And then the surroundings is all the substances not involved in the reaction, but are just around. So think about like, you know, if you have a reaction that's occurring in a test tube, the glass of the test tube might be considered the surroundings. If you also have that reaction occurring in aqueous solution or dissolved in water, the water doesn't do anything. The water is counted as a part of the surroundings, even though it looks like the reaction is happening within the water. It's actually the reaction is happening within the atoms or ions within the water, right? So the water can itself be counted as surroundings, all right? And so the idea is that energy can move from from system to surroundings and vice versa, which means surroundings to systems, okay? So if energy moves from the system to the surroundings, the energy is called, uh, the reaction is called an exothermic reaction. If energy moves from surroundings to system, it's called an endothermic reaction. So let's go draw that out, okay? So generally, we draw out the system is within the surroundings, Okay, surroundings, All right, and this is the system, okay, so if energy transfers out of the system into the surroundings, that's called an exothermic reaction, okay, if energy has to go from the surroundings into the system, that's called an endothermic reaction, All right, so um, let's go keep on reading. In an exothermic reaction, energy is put into the surroundings from the system. And thus the enthalpy of a chemical potential energy decreases. Okay, so what we're looking at is the chemical potential energy of the system here. And if you're giving away some energy, therefore you, uh, the chemical potential energy has decreased. So in the case of a battery, the battery chemicals are the system, and then over time, when that battery is used, uh, it is giving away electrical energy, and so therefore it's going into the surroundings, the external circuit, and so therefore it's an exothermic reaction, All right? In an endothermic reaction, now, like, okay, well, when I say, like, batteries and stuff, like, that's, you know, converting it into electrical energy or light energy, this is endothermic which means it's really talking about heat energy. So, like, batteries aren't technically endo-exothermic, even though they do release energy. But anyway, right? Um, endothermic reactions, energy is taken from the surroundings and put into the system. 
into the system and thus their enthalpy increases, right? So their chemical potential energy increases. So you can have chemical reactions that increase the chemical potential energy or decrease the chemical potential energy. Maybe a good example of this is burning wood, right? If you burn wood, so here's some nice wood that you're going to light up on fire, right? So when you light that fire, a chemical reaction is occurring, and that chemical reaction is taking the chemical potential energy from the wood, right, and then putting it out into the surroundings, okay? So the heat of a chemical potential energy from the wood is getting turned into heat energy, so chemical potential energy, also known as enthalpy, in the wood goes to the surroundings, which would be the air or, you know, you when you're standing close to it, right, um, in the form of heat energy, and so that is going from the system, the wood, and the air, more air particles that are burning within the wood, um, going to the surroundings, which is everything else. All right? So that would be a typ typical exothermic reaction. A typical endothermic reaction might be one of those chemical cool packs, right? So those chemical cold packs that you put on when you've injured yourself, right? Uh, you have two chemicals within the bag, all right? And then when you snap those, that bag or something, uh, those two chemicals will mix, okay? So you've got the blue chemical mixing with the yellow chemical, all right? So when the blue chemical mixes with the yellow chemical, a chemical reaction occurs, and then suddenly it needs a ton of energy, and so therefore energy goes into the system, okay? A ton of energy goes into the system, all right? That means that this is generally heat energy that's going into the system. And if the heat energy is coming from the outside, it's taking away energy from things like your hand. Whoops, that's a terrible hand, right? Your hand, mm. right? Or your knee, because you put that heat pack on one of those places, and therefore the energy from your hand or your knee is going into the um, chemical reaction, and therefore that's an endothermic reaction, all right? So... That's the idea of exo and endothermic reaction. Energy is moving into the system or out of the system and to the surroundings, etc. All right, so let's move on. Okay, uh, for both exothermic and endothermic reactions, both need to rearrange their particles. So that's what we've dealt with before, All right? To rearrange the particles, you first have to break the bonds or, you know, bond breaking uh, that hold the particles together. This requires energy. Okay, so just the thinking about when you melt something, this requires energy, and so therefore, um, the stronger the bond, the more energy needed to break it. So that's very similar to the idea of melting the boiling point, right? But let's go through the next part. The second part of rearranging particles is the formation of new bonds, which is bond forming, all right? Now, when you think of bond forming, Forming, you cannot think of like bond building and stuff like that where you think of, oh, it requires energy because this process releases energy, okay? Think of it like two hands coming together, right? When they come together, they snap together and they release energy in the form of sound energy um, as a clap, right? And so the harder they come together uh, or the stronger the bond, the more energy is released. So you got to think of two particles slamming together and being stuck together. That's going to release the amount of energy, a certain amount of energy, and the stronger the bond, the more energy is released, okay? So, in terms of a, uh, whoops, that's not my one. Uh, let's move on to the next one, and then we'll go through that idea, All right? So, the relative amounts of energy needed to break bonds and the energy released when bonds are formed determines, in case of energy needed to break versus the energy released by bond formation, and the relative amounts of those two things determine whether the energy is released or absorbed. All right, so let's take into account, okay, bond breaking requires energy, so that's a negative, right? And bond formation produces energy, okay? So this one here, the red one is larger than the blue one, so you have more negative than positive, 
right? And so therefore, there's an overall negative here. Okay, so this is bond breaking. This is bond forming. And this is just graphical representation of it, right? And so therefore, overall, you have a negative energy, right? Which means not really negative energy, but effectively there's an overall um, take in of energy, right? So takes in energy from the surroundings, and therefore this is an endothermic reaction, right? But if it's the other way around, okay, where you require a little bit of energy, but then your bond formation produces a lot of energy, right, then you'll have a overall positive, right, overall positive here, and so therefore it's going to release energy, and this will be effectively uh, a uh, exothermic reaction. Okay, so it's the relative amount of those uh, amounts of energy determines whether it's going to be a um, exo or endothermic. All right, okay, and you can read that bit later. Okay, so the amount of energy per mole, amount of energy per mole that is required for a reaction to occur is called the activation energy. Okay, and so that's the activation energy. That's the energy required to break bonds. Oops. That's the energy required to break bonds. Some have a low uh, activation energy. Some have a low activation energy. That's EA. But some have high activation energies. Okay? Um, and then, also the last definition we have to learn is that the point in time where all the particles have broken their bonds all particles have broken their bonds and not yet have formed new bonds is called the transition state. This is the point of highest enthalpy or chemical potential energy because it's absorbed a whole bunch of energy in but not released any of it out yet in terms of um, a bond formation. Okay, so that's the highest point of enthalpy or chemical potential energy when you're just broken all the bonds and it has a super amount of chemical potential energy and though then they reform that gets released as heat or other stuff and therefore um the energy goes back to a more reasonable amount all right so that's all that's a whole bunch of definitions that you'll have to try and remember and we'll be going through their context of uh, how they're used in later videos adios